in this video, I want to give you a whole new understanding of food and how it relates to your biofield. And again, keep in mind these images of the biofield that I went over in the first video. The key points with food that I'm going to talk about in this video are number one, our enzyme and hormone levels start decreasing by age 27 in the average person. And what this means is, as we'll see, our energy starts to decrease at around age 27 to 30. Now, that doesn't have to happen. That's just the average person that doesn't really do anything but eat the standard American diet. What we're going to see is that enzymes are actually a physical manifestation of chi or the life energy, and hormones are as well, because remember, hormones are connected to your glands, and the glands are the physical anchors of the chakras, which are the main energy vortices. So when your enzyme and hormone levels are going down, that means your overall life energy is going down. And all the studies on aging show that as we get older, both enzymes and hormone levels get diminished. We're going to also talk about how to energize your biofield with food by eating less, more nutrient-dense food, more living food, more fermented foods, and more alkaline foods, and the foods that damage your biofield, which you're probably aware, the white flour, white sugar, soft drinks, trans fats, fast foods, junk foods, GMOs, commercial foods that are laced with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and animal products, meat and dairy. And I also want to conclude with conscious eating, and you're going to see that it's not just what you eat, but how you eat. That's really just as important. Basically, we absorb energy and information and frequencies from food, and we kind of bathroom out the rest. So we want to keep this flow going, you know, with, within the colon, the element earth, the colon is the associated organ of elimination. So the cleansing and nutritious high-fiber foods we're going to talk about are going to keep that colon clean and the, everything moving so that you won't get an accumulation of toxicity. I have these top 10 energy medicine diet and nutrition tips. So we're going to look at food and nutrition from an energy medicine perspective. Number one, eat less and focus on nutrient-dense foods. Be what Dr. Furman calls a nutritarian, meaning we're going to look for the foods that have the most nutrition per number of calories. As a general rule, we as Americans, we just eat too much. You know, the average person's are consuming around 3,500 calories a day. And in some of these long-lived cultures like the Vilcabambas and the Soviet Georgia and Hunza land, you know, they're only consuming about 1,700 calories a day. Your body craves nutrients, not calories. And the way that we can eat less calories and still not be hungry is to eat more nutrient-dense foods. Here's a chart here of uh, the most nutrient-dense foods. It might be a surprise to you to not to see any animal products there. But yes, it turns out the foods that are the highest nutrition per calorie are all vegetarian, all vegan actually. And you can see they're mostly your green foods. I also want to kind of talk about true hunger here a little bit because this is one of the reasons that we overeat. When our body's not getting the nutrition that it needs, the hypothalamus, the apostat center in the hypothalamus, will keep saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. There's two mechanisms in the body that will give you a full feeling. Number one is the hypothalamus, the apostat. If you get enough micronutrients and nutrition and vitamins and minerals, you know, the hunger will shut off. And number two, the stretch receptors in your stomach will signal satiation by detecting the volume of food eaten, not the weight of the food. Basically, you're filled up with nutrients and fiber, and the apostat center in the hypothalamus will turn the hunger off. Contrary, if you eat fast food, processed foods, junk foods that are basically empty calories or there's no nutrition, you will keep feeling hungry. Your apostat will keep saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. The other thing about nutrient-dense foods and getting more fruits and vegetables is it's not just vitamins and minerals, it's also phytonutrients. And look at this chart here. If you eat your five colors every day, or you can say seven colors, all these different colors have pigments, you know, like red is lycopene, blue, purple is like resveratrol, green is chlorophyll, lutein, other things that are very healthy. White is like your allicin and garlic, and then beta carotene and orange foods. Again, we tend to think of vitamins and minerals as just maybe like around 40 or 50, but there are hundreds of phytochemicals from nature's pharmacy that you, you, know, you don't get in traditional multivitamins and supplements unless they're like a superfood supplement. So make sure that you do get a good variety of food. I do recommend a few supplements. You can see in my resources section on my energy medicine website. I love Dr. Schultz's products on his superfood. There's a few vitamins and minerals that are good to supplement like vitamin D3, magnesium, B12, omega-3 fatty acids, I also recommend a good probiotic and an enzyme. Now, with relation to your biofield, okay, these micronutrients are also manifestations of the life energy because they're coenzymes. They work with enzymes. But also, digestion takes more energy than just about anything else, meaning if you eat the wrong foods, 
you're going to sap your life force and your life energy from your biofield, especially all the junk foods, where living foods, as we'll see, can enrich and enliven your biofield. So keep that in mind. This is why you want to eat less, because eating and digestion take a lot of energy. Next, we're going to talk about enzyme-rich foods. And again, like I said, enzymes do relate to life force in your body, and they do deplete with age. And there's over 3,000 enzymes in your body, and you know only maybe 25 to 50 of them are involved in digestion. So don't think that enzymes are just in digestion. You can see from this chart here some very high enzyme foods, papayas and pineapple especially. Just make sure you get non-GMO papaya. Living foods and raw foods in general are going to be rich in enzymes because when you cook food over 118 degrees roughly, you're going to destroy the living enzymes, which means when you eat those cooked foods, you're going to deplete your body's life force and, and enzyme reserve. And again, we, we lose enzymes as we get older, so we want to eat a mostly raw vegan diet. But there are certain cooked foods, as I'll explain, that are also very healthy. Number three, probiotic and prebiotic promoting foods. Probiotics are little enzyme-producing machines, and 80% of our immune system resides in our gut. I can't tell you how important this is because so many diseases and illnesses are a result of what's called dysbiosis, where your gut bacteria are replaced by harmful bacteria, candida overgrowth, and parasites. So getting a clean diet and starting to flush all that out, but get more fermented foods. The best fermented foods, I think, are the vegan ones, kimchi, sauerkraut, unpasteurized pickles. And instead of yogurt, and in this image here, I have yogurt and kefir, but you can make a coconut meat yogurt and a coconut water kefir. In fact, our local raw food restaurant has that made, and it's just delicious. Miso, tempeh, sourdough bread, I probably wouldn't recommend so much, but you, you know that's certainly a better choice than regular bread, the way that it's fermented. And the other thing is, soil-based organisms are found in freshly picked fruits and vegetables. So you are getting good bacteria just by eating those live fruits and vegetables. Now, along with probiotic is prebiotics, which is sort of fertilizer for your gut, meaning the probiotics need to eat something, and what they eat is these prebiotic type of sugars. And the best sources you can see from this chart here, artichokes, asparagus, garlic. I mean, I won't go through the whole list. Yucca and roots, very high. Chicory is very high. Basically, again, vegan, you know, mostly fruits and vegetables. The good bacteria love that. Oh, and I just want to say that the probiotics, like enzymes, are like literally little light bulbs for your biofield, metaphorically. So because they're basically little enzyme-producing machines that break down food and help with your immune system, they're going to give you a glow to your biofield. And if you have dysbiosis, you're not going to have that glow. Number four is high in fiber. Now, this is really important because it turns out that fiber is a prebiotic. So high fiber foods are going to actually feed your good bacteria. And this is why doing steamed vegetables is okay because it actually like steamed broccoli, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, even like acorn squash and, and sweet potatoes, even though they're cooked and beans as well, pretty much the highest fiber foods there are are beans. These high fiber foods, even when they're cooked, are going to give a nice fertilizer for your good bacteria. Plus, they're just so high in fiber that they help with the stretch receptors in your stomach to give you the feeling of fullness. So does that make sense? So I'm not saying to eat a 100% raw food diet because certain foods like beans and legumes and like bro to me, broccoli and cauliflower, yes, you can eat that raw, but some of those cruciferous vegetables are hard to digest. Certainly sweet potatoes are hard to digest eaten raw. But as a rule of thumb, I think it's good to shoot for like 50% raw. And one of the ways you can do that, as we'll see, is to get more raw food snacks go through carefully some of these high fiber foods, you know, chia seeds, flax seeds, quinoa, you know, some of the really good gluten-free whole grains are a good source. And do more soups, you know, with beans because the beans are so high in fiber and they have a lot of benefits that people don't tap into. Number five is fresh and high raw. Now, okay, now we're going to really get into this energetic component of diet. Please look at these images of cooked tomato, of a raw tomato, cooked broccoli, raw broccoli. You can see goji berries, cacao nibs, a cooked carrot versus a raw carrot, cooked cabbage versus live cabbage. It goes without saying, don't microwave your food. The time that you get in the most trouble is when you're really hungry and you need something to eat. So if your cupboards are full of junk food, you're going to grab you know, a junk food. So I like raw cacao or raw chocolate snacks. You know, My favorite is the Divine Organic Chocolate Brittle, but there's a lot of great raw chocolate organic snacks. Kale chips are great. My friend Davey at uh, Living Nuts, I really love their sprouted nuts. Raw Guru's got some great sprouted nuts as well. You know, have just fruit and vegetable as a snack. 
Number six, organic and non-GMO. There's a lot to say about this, but people say, well, organic, I mean, what's, what's more expensive? Well, there's two things. Number one, it actually does have more nutrition. And there's a study done by Tufts University that basically showed up to 87% higher vitamins and minerals than, than commercial, organic, that is. But the pesticides on conventional produce have been shown, like Roundup, for example, to kill, not only destroy your gut bacteria, but to create what's called leaky gut. It's a real double whammy. So it's so important to get organic food only. Okay, And look at some of these images of conventional versus organic. And you can see that it has more life energy from an energy medicine point of view. This comparison between organic mushrooms and commercial mushrooms, conventional apple, organic apple, orange, and tomato, you can see a definite difference in the life energy. Organic foods are less likely to be genetically modified. And read my article on genetically modified foods. There's a lot to say, but basically it's Frankenscience. You know, it's basically we're the experiment and nobody knows the really long-term effects of using genetically modified foods. But avoid genetically modified foods. And unfortunately, most animals are fed soy and corn and genetically modified foods. So if you're eating animal products, you're probably getting a lot of genetically modified organisms. Number seven is alkaline. So most of us hear, oh yeah, we need to alkalize our body, alkalize or die. Well, that is so important because acid alkaline balance is a measure of voltage in your body. A pH meter is a volt meter. So more alkaline foods actually have a higher energetic potential. So you definitely want to alkalize your body and your blood by eating more, again, fruits and vegetables, vegan. It's not that I'm preaching vegan over eating meat because of of spiritual reasons, even though you can make a a good case for that. It literally just is the most nutrient-dense alkalizing foods there are. You know, animal products just don't compare. So definitely look into getting more alkaline food. I'd recommend like an 80-20 balance. So you're still going to eat some acid foods, but try to get mostly alkaline. Number eight, cleansing and not clogging, meaning eliminate mucus from your body and your, especially your bowel. Think of it in terms of water-rich foods. You know, try to quench your thirst with your food as much as possible by eating lots of juicy fruits and vegetables, salads, freshly pressed juices. Number nine, include more superfoods. And this list here, spirulina, goji, acai, hemp, bee pollen, maca, blue-green algae, you know, a little bit of raw honey. I like the manuka raw honey just because it's good for your stomach. Cacao, marine phytoplankton, kamu kamu, the highest source of vitamin C, pretty much on planet Earth as far as plants go. Noni, coconut. So try to get more of these superfoods because they're incredibly concentrated. And I do recommend Dr. Richard Schultz's superfood formula, which has a lot of these. Number 10, conscious eating. Now, this is just about as important as what you eat, meaning how you eat is just about as important as what you eat. This little chart here really summarizes it nicely. I mean, I always tell people, sit down, don't watch TV, bless your food, say a prayer, just really enjoy and savor the food. You know, when you sit down to eat, make every day Thanksgiving. Be grateful for all the blessings in life. You know, actually put your food on a plate and don't just eat it out of the box and and watch TV while you're doing it. I tell people, be like a train and chew, chew, chew. This is so important. It's kind of a funny little thing, but you need to chew your food or they call Fletcherize your food. This guy Fletcher, he would say, eat every bite, 50 chews. That's maybe a little overboard, but certainly we need to chew our food a lot more than we do. One trick you can do is put your fork down and chew your food and at least swallow your food and let it get to your stomach before you take the next bite. Most people are just stuffing their face and they're putting another bite of food in their mouth before they've even swallowed the previous bite. This is so important because that chewing breaks up the food into a higher surface area, which takes stress off of what? Your enzymes, right? See, if you've got these big chunks of food in your stomach, your enzymes are going to have to work a lot harder, which is going to sap your biofield and your life force, you know, even the very best raw food. And do start by blessing your food because your hands have energy and you can energize Even if you're eating maybe an unhealthy choice, you can at least energize your food. So thanks for watching this video and do read the article on energymedicine.com. There's so much to say. I have a website, loveitorloseit.net because there's no way I can fit into one video um, all there is to say about nutrition and food. I will see the next video on water. Water.